6,825 pounds as we see her here today, the 29 Tedward Edward Grey Wolf seen in beautiful black label luxury here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan today. This gives us a private rear bunkhouse, monster camp kitchen, and an interesting triple entry door into the bathroom from the hallway, the exterior, and the bedroom, which is, I think, where the TE actually comes from. I've always liked this model. It, I just, I liked that it was a little bit different right from the start. Cherokee's been very good about, well, frankly, always being an innovator. They've always been willing to do it a little bit different. Um, they've gone with a different decor here this year. It's, uh, you know, got some real heavy espresso wood. It's not a jet black. The camera just doesn't always handle the comparison interchange very well. Like if I get you over here a little bit closer, you can see that it actually does have like more of a dark uh, espresso kind of look to it. But they've complemented that and I think offset that very nicely with otherwise very light accent points, like whether it's the countertop, the tabletop, the flooring, the wall panels, everything else complements it nicely. Frankly, even their slide fascia has a neat little uh to it up here. Double up, uh, uh. Anyway, uh, holy cow, where to begin on this? Well, you know what? Let's start up top. Let's start at the very beginning because there was a song that told me that's a very good place to start. Sound system. Uh, they are including this interesting little subwoofer thing right now, and the little blue accent light in that is tied to the slide lighting over the side. You can turn that off. If you're not into the blue, turn it off. No big deal. Air conditioning. This is really cool. This is something I, I'm very excited about. Cherokee has standardized in all of their eight foot wide products, whether it's a Gray Wolf, a Cherokee, etc., a standard 15,000 BTU Coleman air conditioner. Um, it's a little bit quieter than some of the Dometics. Uh, I, I think they both work just fine, but I love that it's the larger 15K Air standard. Now, the thing is, in a black label Cherokee at Halet RV, you would have really seen 15,000 BTU Airs regardless. That's just something that we tended to package them with. But now, even the standard series are going to get the upgraded Air. So, that's cool. We will come back and see the kitchen in more detail. I do like that skylight above. And I drew the sunshade. Just so that, you know, if you want to see, you can still get some light without getting directly fried like an ant under a magnifying glass over there. Um, where do I go from here? How about the uh, seating over here in the super slide? So we've got ourselves a couple big panoramic windows. You can see both slide open for maximum airflow. Now we'll get a better look at the sofa from the other direction, but we're standing right here. So I do want to give you just a quick peek. But what I want to look at from here, I think I want to pop open the drawers below that dinette before I forget, because there's some huge storage going on right there. Now we'll see some more storage when we come back through the kitchen, but I didn't want to miss those full extension drawers below that big U dinette. And obviously that can fold down into a large sleeping space, which is great because it's good for not just little kids, but you know, adults could sleep there, <laughs> big dogs. Now you've also got roll down zebra shades here. If you notice it, they kind of like dual panel and depending on how you sit them, I've got a difference in left, right going on. You can really block out the sun. You can partially block out the sun. You can do a little bit of whatever works for you on a given trip. Now, naturally the sofa can fold down as well. It's obviously a much smaller sleeping space than what you would get from either the bunks or the bed or the dinette over here, but it is quick and easy. And hey, I figured while I was at it, we go ahead and plop everything down. We'll crack open door number one and take a look at the bunk room next. Now there's obviously a bunk privacy door and wall here. When this model first came out, it was actually an open concept. You, uh, There was no door, there was no full privacy wall. And we were uh, custom requesting ours with that privacy wall. Now, the thing is we've been doing that for a while and I don't know if this is now the standard build or if we're still getting a cool optional build you can't find elsewhere. What I do know is you got lots of windows. You see the household and USB plugs there, uh, more lighting up top. Also over here, we have what I call a big kid bunk above the outside kitchen. A lot like those big two slide bunk houses. This is a really nice way to save a lot of weight and cost compared to one of those. It's a little bit wider, it's not longer, but a big kid can sleep kind of crooked on it a little bit nicely. Notice too that even back here, they're still using that sealed edge press membrane countertop stuff. As long as I'm standing back here, might as well open everything up to give you a nice look at all the storage that we have in here. You can see it has its own kind of little built-in bunk ladder. Gets right out of the way, so you don't have to throw the kids to the upper bed, which is obviously a good way to, you know, wreck a shoulder or something like that. But we've still got a little bit more storage down here 
in the the wider portion of the bunk where i call it the big kid bunk they still have a little bit of extra space here so they really utilize every little nook and cranny they can while still maximizing uh storage capacity and with all the windows in here it always looks and feels nice and wide open and i almost forgot there's some entertainment hookups right above that as well along with additional usb plugs that the two upper bunks could share and the cool thing with this floor plan is it looks pretty awesome regardless of which direction you're coming from. Doesn't matter if you're, you know, coming from the front door, the bedroom, the whatever. It's just got good looks all the way through. Now, I like the way they do this layout. It's very similar in the living room to something like a White Hawk 29BH that we have here at Halid RV. If you do decide to add a TV to this RV, you can see it's at a very easy viewing angle in comparison to the sofa or the dinette frequently. Or, frankly, frequently? What? Anyway. <sighs> <laughs> we're gonna roll with it my point though is that if someone does come and go they want to get into the fridge or in and out of the kitchen door they don't interrupt what's happening at the entertainment and with this being a triple entry door remember you have direct entry straight to the bathroom from the bedroom or the uh outside there's really no reason to ever have to interrupt anybody it works very nicely uh, we've talked about the air and the speaker. I do want to point out one of the few differences between um, Cherokees and uh, Grey Wolves that we're standing in. Grey Wolf does not use any sort of floor heating vents. Um, and typically the main deck of these is completely carpetless. And that's because they use a different slide system from Big Brother Cherokee. That's also why they have two steps instead of three steps and a different chassis. And that is literally the difference between them. The slide system determines the differences. Now this thing has some phenomenal storage and it starts right here, right now. Now starting over here next to that max capacity and fast cooling 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt compressor fridge we've got ourselves a big pantry that little red switch down there by the way that's a battery disconnect that goes with the juice pack it's usually located below the fridge i don't know why it just always seems to be but this pantry whoo i love that they didn't just leave it open you know you it's deep it's wide it's easy to access I think the phrase max capacity could just as easily apply here as it does to that refrigerator. Um, over here at our main kitchen area, this is where you see, again, one of the very few differences on the inside of a Black Label Grey Wolf or Cherokee as compared to a standard series here at Halid RV. That is the solid surface countertops. Now note, it has a hard surface like counter flush matching split sink cover. I've just got it sitting on top of the stove top for easy reference right now nice space for a wastebasket down here below the sink and notice how it's that kind of skirted black stainless looking sink man that looks just fantastic big plywood drawers notice that they're using two big drawers instead of like two or three small ones just a little cherokee doing cherokee things kind of difference i've always thought that's going to be a lot more spatula friendly nothing like getting a spatula jammed in your drawer and stopping you from doing stuff and you feel like the only thing you can do is rip the front of the drawer off to get to it I've seen that happen, um, thankfully uh, never in my own home or RV. The, uh, the faucet uh, hardware upgrades with Black Label as well, but all of the Cherokees are going to have this little, they call it like a little hand sanitizer pump, but you could easily use it for, uh, you know, hand soaps and things like that. Plenty of outlets here in the kitchen space as well, not to mention the fact that up top we have ourselves a nice big full depth cabinet. And the, the beveled glass doors, is that the correct phrase, beveled on that? I'm not like a HGTV kind of guy. I, I get these words wrong all the time. Anyway, the glass doors with the vertical striping things on them. They look good. They're full depth. You know, it, it's it's a very compact, functional kitchen. Also, if I uh, take a look here, you see the, the two overhead lights there, but there's also two more below. When they first started doing this, they were actually calling it the Cherokee Super Kitchen because it just lit up so well over here. It was super <laughs> jumping up to the hallway where the uh, bedroom and bathroom would be accessed this is where you start to see the te of the tedward edward the triple entry come into play we can walk right in here through the hallway you see there's a direct bedroom entry door which i conveniently left wide open and in the face of what i like to refer to as the invisiview entry door it's got a straight uh basically glass panel you can see out of from the inside but it is smoky as all get out. It is hard to see through from the outside. Not to mention you could just hang something over it if you're so inclined. Up top here, Black Label will get us the upgraded kind of Max Air style XL vent fan, which will really push or uh, yeah, push some air out of the RV or pull air out of the RV, however you want to call it. And that's why these doors are slotted. 
Now there's no privacy problems here because the door's up too high, you can't smash your face against the ceiling, at least not without making enough noise that you know you wouldn't be uh, you know, heard. Um, everybody knows what the cowboy hat on the door handle means, right? Okay guys, thanks. Can we be respectful of the cowboy hat? Appreciate it. Now the, <laughs> the floor space in here is awesome. There's tons of room. You can get out of this big radius shower and notice full surround paneling all the way up to the ceiling and a skylight for extra headroom for taller folks like me as needed. Um, the, uh, you know, nice equipment here in this bathroom. Now, if I sneak around the corner just a little bit, uh, this has been just a staple of the Cherokee family for a while. Huge medicine cabinet, huge sink. Now, in the kitchen, we saw solid surface countertops. Everywhere else, and in uh, a, a standard Cherokee, even the kitchen would feature a sealed edge thermal foil uh, counter like we're seeing right here. Not to mention, I like the little kind of, just a little splash guard to help protect the wall paneling right there. Moving up into the bedroom, you can see a uh, 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 privacy door, not just a curtain. There's ceiling lights, there's lights under the headboard, you've got dual hanging closets, and a full overhead cabinet space. Very normal stuff, although... I love that monster viewing window that we have right there. Across from the bed, if you are so inclined, there are TV hookups and you could mount something against the wall right there. That second uh, door to the bathroom, handy at night. That's another thing I like about this one. It's a bunk model with a shower, not a tub, and it puts the bathroom right up next to, uh, you know, you and me, basically, not the kiddos. And uh, in my experience, well, I don't know, my kid's up and down at night. I, I know that my wife tends to be up and down at night a lot using the bathroom. I seem to sleep through uh, the evening. Although, uh, like, frankly, guys, I don't even understand people who can wake up at four in the morning and exercise. If I wake up at four in the morning, I won't even get out of bed to pee. I'll literally just lay there in pain. I don't care. I'm sleeping. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not a story. That's true. Um, now, over here, there's a funky thing. Both sides of the bed have household and USB plugs. Now this top thing doesn't look like USB plugs and they're mounted on the back side of it. It's basically like a mount for a specific kind of proprietary um, either I think Wi-Fi unit or Bluetooth speaker or something like that. I, I keep getting conflicting information on this at some point. If I get a quote spare moment, I should uh, try to clarify that. Um, there is also storage below the bed. So uh, what's cool is it's uh, kind of separated from inside outside. And a quick look with the slides closed. Actually, one of the things, speaking of the slides, is over here, our master command center. You know, we've got our uh, Bluetooth uh, AM FM stereo system right there with an HDMI input to expand that. Upper right is our battery monitor, which comes equipped with, uh, as part of the juice pack option. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get up on the roof. But the command panel right here, you can sync to your phone. So if you want to operate the slide yourself from your phone, which is handy, like not when you're standing here. That obviously doesn't make any sense. When you're outside, if you want to make sure the slide's going to open without crushing something, very handy. Now, with the slide closed, what can we access? And the short answer is everything through one method or another. You can get all the way through here. You can get to the refrigerator. You can get to everything. You don't have to do too much of a travel trailer two-step. You can slide between there. And something I like to always share if I could change one thing on an RV, and I would love your opinion, tell me what you like and what you would change. Please do me a favor, say something nice if you're going to say something derogatory. <laughs> it's just <laughs> common courtesy. If I could change one thing, I would make this door open inward instead of outward, but I think there's a reason that it doesn't. I think that's a fire code thing because when it opens outward like this without bump bumping the slide, I can't get back there. But I think the door has to open out for like fire code panic, oh my god, we gotta get out of here right now kind of purposes. Then obviously we can utilize door number two to come in through the triple entry bathroom door. So if you need to get to the bathroom, the hallway, which I don't know why you would, but theoretically you could, uh, or the bedroom, you can do all of that without ever having to touch the slide. So I guess as long as you just throw the kids duffel bags on the sofa for transit, you're gonna be fine. Now that we're outside, we can really start to, uh, you know, see where most of that black label goodness comes into play. The, the biggest portion of it is obviously that high gloss fiberglass exterior. It shines this thing up, makes her nice and purdy, and it is a serious head turner as a result. The nose graphics on a black label do change as well. You see a little blue speck in the wolf's eye on the front. 
That's kind of one of those black label signature things. Um, a uh, power tongue jack on the front comes with the black label package, but there's also handy little things like safety chain hooks and what I call a seven-way plug buddy up there so that your seven-way pigtail doesn't have to go dragging through the dirt. Now, Cherokee's very consistent. We're actually going to see the back side of this. I dropped an access panel so you could see, uh, you know, what's happening on the inside of the RV. But basically, water heater, gas and electric, auto ignition, fast recharge, outside utility shower. And we do, uh, well, not we do, it used to be optional, it's all standard now. The underbelly of these, they do have enclosed holding tanks. Now, when we go black label, you get the hot, like super dark tinted frameless windows that goes with it versus the uh, standard Cherokee has the non uh, tinted non frameless windows. Then if you're looking at the top corners of the slide, you can see the little rectangle jobs right there. That is a pre prep for a slide awning and that is something that uh, doesn't get the attention it deserves. There's a lot of RVs that don't do that and without it, there's usually not enough structure in that slide face to properly install slide awnings. Now, not, I'm not trying to cause problems, but I see RVs rolling down the road all the time with slide awnings installed on slides and in walls that don't have the proper structure. I see it happen with frequency. Um, know that at Halet RV, if you want to install slide awning on something, no sweat. We'll definitely, uh, you know, quote that out for you. But if it's not appropriate, we will also do you at least the respect of letting you know. Now, uh, below the bunks over here, they didn't let any of that space go to waste. Nice, wide open storage compartment in here, which is one of the things I've always liked, what I would call a, uh, a quad bunk or a private bunk for, or a lot of bunks. Um, it seems like under bunk storage has been kind of cannibalized for various things in recent years. And that's one of the reasons that they put their uh, water heater and uh, outside shower up front on these it leaves open storage below those bunks you wouldn't otherwise have. Now that ladder is actually an optional piece of equipment that we like to put on our black label Cherokees here at Halet RV. Um, it just kind of feels appropriate when you start getting into that fiberglass. The, uh, I'm sorry, I'm walking down a hill. I just about fell there if the camera's getting squirrely. Uh, she's back up camera ready. And down here, you see that folding cargo travel rack. That's another thing that we like to put on these. It's got about a 200 pound capacity. Uh, and you don't need to take the spare tire off to flip that down, which is kind of nice. The spare tire, amazingly, another optional piece of equipment. Now you're getting a bit of a sneak preview here. I shot myself in the foot. I meant to have that camp kitchen close, so you had like a big Legend of Zelda super secret reveal effect. But we still got a nice power awning to pop open, and there's a lot of good things going on over here. And when you open this one up, holy cow, there's a lot going on over here on the door side. So obviously this one has a big camp kitchen, which seems like it's getting increasingly hard to find. And not only that, Cherokee does an absolutely phenomenal big camp kitchen. I wanna look through all the components of this because there's, there's a lot going on. So it has this uh, pull out cooktop over here. And once again, remember, pardon the dust. That's all stuff that we take care of for you at Halet RV at no additional charge to you. But notice it's all galvanized rolled steel, the metallic type countertop stuff right here. Look at that little attention to detail. They have the, uh, a little cutaway even for the knobs so that you're not constantly clacking the knobs against that thing. Just smart, smart features. That is an ice maker right there, and that thing keeps up like a champ. As long as you got water and power going to it, you're going to have ice. Now, the RV's new from the factory. It's winterized, so some of the faucets, remember, have these little baggies on them holding the antifreeze. But isn't it nice that Cherokee does that so you don't have a nice pink Kool-Aid dribble all over everything? Real sink with a real drain and a utility drawer because, you know, when is more storage ever the wrong answer? And then this thing. This is like, this is unlike anything else. This is a 5.7 cubic foot fridge and freezer. This massive thing. So this is the size of outdoor refrigerator you usually find in most RVs in a, in a big camp kitchen. Now you basically double it and you're gaining an entire freezer section over here. This thing is absolutely awesome. Not to mention an extra kick of overhead storage. Now remember, you have what I like to call the Invisiview entry doors where you can clearly see out of it, but it's basically got a glass front. So it's it's seamless, gorgeous, invisible on the, on the front side, but it still has that awesome kind of frosty glass sort of uh, work on the front there. The uh, stable steps that you're seeing here, that's something Cherokee's been doing for longer than just about anybody. Uh, I remember the year that these first kind of hit, Cherokee and Rockwood were two that jumped right on it and everyone else has been keeping up with them ever since. 
The uh, aluminum wheels here that you get with the black label package uh, replace the standard mag wheels, which I think also look good, frankly. Now they have little tire pressure indicator valve stem caps. It'll flip from green to red if there's tire uh, pressure needed in the tire. I still recommend, like if you go to a travel stop, just kind of flick that a couple times to make sure it's not stuck in there. I've heard a couple reports of that very sparingly, however. Little details too, like this is an anti-slam entry door. You can flip it and it doesn't bang against the side of the trailer. The Cherokee likes to put that little rubber stopper there so it doesn't smash against anything. It's just the details sometimes that make the difference. Now when the awning lights are on, I should have flicked that switch on, you'll have back lights behind the speakers as well as the badging here, which is also specific to the black label version. And good lord, look at the reflectivity that you're getting off that right there. It is just, it's, a, it's like a mirror, this thing. Outside TV hookups, and it seems weird, but our black tank flush is also right over here. Remember though, that's because our bathroom is on the uh, Tedward Edward triple entry door. So that is the most direct location from the black tank flush to the holding tank. And at the end of the day, you want it to work, don't you? <laughs> this is also a really good floor plan to indicate that they don't do something cool just like some of the time. They have that cool see-through entry door on both doors. And by the way, this awning right here, it's just a two finger easy tilt. Now a little pro tip from your Uncle Josh. I did it one time last year. I'll never do it again and I'll make sure no one else does it. Don't push up right here with your palm unless you want this thing to bite a chunk out of your hand. Make sure you grab here or push here. But the thing is, when you retract the awning, you don't even have to mess with it. It will sort itself out as it retracts. Now the uh, front storage compartment up here, I flipped this down from the inside I should have done a better job of not making it look like I just threw it in there, but anyway. Um, people ask, why doesn't this have a full pass-through? That's because that's where your water heater and a, a bunch of other stuff is located. And uh, Cherokee does this for consistency, quality, assurance sake. By putting that in the same place every single time on basically all of the campers they possibly can, they increase quality and decrease problems through repetition, repetition, repetition. And I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> because <laughs> that would be repetitive. That's the little charge controller for the juice pack. Uh, that is, again, an optional piece of equipment. Black Label is giving us some handy magnet holdbacks for a little simple, easier one-hand operation. And you see the uh, sealed hinge on that baggage door going to do a good job of keeping some problems out. Now, Black Label is also giving us a, uh, a more aggressive outside patio scare light between the bathroom door and that bedroom window. And, you know, I think we've pretty much got her covered down here. What do you say we take a trip up to the roof? Well, no, no tripping and, and being on the roof. Those are two things that don't really go together. Uh, I'll work that out in my own time. Now that roof ladder that we've optioned on here gives us a nice little opportunity to get up here, take a look at things that isn't always necessarily available. One of the things that you're going to see is a white shroud on the air conditioner. That will help the AC unit operate more efficiently. You know, there's no sense in soaking up a bunch of heat from a black shroud and then trying to cool the rest of the RV with it. It just is counterintuitive. Now, a black shroud on an air conditioner isn't going to make or break the world's difference in heating and cooling. It's, it's just a touch. It's a factor I like. Now, if you choose to upgrade to the uh, little LCI Wi-Fi hotspot, that's where the roof mount portion of that would be located. And what's nice is you'd never have to break any factory seals for it. You can just unscrew the top plate, install the thing, and off you go. And we can assist you with that kind of stuff here at our parts and service center. Now, again, this RV is equipped with the Cherokee Juice Pack. It is a simple solar package, but a surprisingly effective one. So it's not a massive panel, but it is a raised panel high efficiency Furion panel. It's 50 watts, and the system is expandable up to 100 watts. So you could add another one of those same panels without needing to, you know, go crazy swapping out charge controllers and wiring gauges and all that kind of stuff. And uh, just a simple 50 watt panel off grid with a single battery can get you a good extended weekend with that 12 volt compressor refrigerator. Firan actually did some testing. If you're curious, ask us. I've got a link to a video where we share some results for something like that with 0, 50, and 100 watts just to kind of give you an idea of how everything's going to boil down. So if you like what you see, give us a call here at Halet RV and we'll get you camping. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet camping everyone.